Star Wars Force Arena Players to this Let's Play video. So we're carrying on from the starting video where we picked our leader and we're now going to talk about movement and how your leaders move. Now every leader, much like their special abilities, are all different. Some leaders move really, really fast. Some leaders can jump over things. Some leaders are really, really slow. Um, the Boba Fett can jump over things, but we can't do that here because this is obviously a tutorial. And it says to move to the target. So we'll tap on that area there, and there he goes. He moves forward, which is great. And now double tap. What double tap does will give you like a little speed buff. So you run, basically, rather than just walk. And if you see this yellow bar underneath Boba Fett, where it says one and the green bar, that's his health bar. And underneath that is a stamina bar. So once that goes down to black, that means he can't run anymore. He's out of stamina, and that will build back up over time. So if I double click, watch the yellow bar go down. There it goes, a little bit there, see? And it builds back up quite quickly. So what we do now to attack anybody, we just, as it says there, tap on the enemy to attack. And because we've got a gun, we've got a ranged ability, so we don't need to get up close and personal. So we fire on that, and there it goes. And both of them just do all the damage. Automatically attacks, so you don't need to press anything. He'll just attack. But you can run back, you can run forward, you can move around. And here we go with his special ability too. So what we'll do now, we'll just press this here. And watch this. Boom, we're all dead. Perfect. And we've got one more attack. So we'll run forward. You can run backwards. You can double tap to move away from them. They're coming close. So I'll use this special ability now. And they're dead again. Easy as that. And that's how you take out enemy units in the game. And here we go again. So double forward. Press a button. We stop and we attack. And they're dead. Obviously, later in the game, it's not going to be as easy as that because some of the card levels will be quite high. But it gives you an idea what we can do. So we jump in there again, or we'll use our special ability and take them out, and they are now dead. And we get a card pack. So in Star Wars Force Arena, whenever you win a game, and it's only when you win a game, do you get a pack. And there are three types of packs in the game right now. Technically, there's four, but there's three that you can actually unlock. You've got the standard bronze pack, which has a three hour cooldown time. And then you've got a platinum pack, which I believe has an eight hour cooldown time. And then you've got a gold pack, which has a 12 hour cooldown time. And if you are really, really, really lucky, you'll get a platinum pack. And the platinum pack, which I'll show you in a little bit, is an 18 hour unlock time but it guarantees you a unique card it will be random but you're guaranteed a unique card for one of your leaders uh, or you might not have the leader unlocked yet but it depends on what you've got in your current deck but right now the packs that we earn um, are free and they have no or maybe a couple of seconds of cooldown time so we'll unlock this and this will give us our cards and our troops that we need to do battle with and because we are playing Boba Fett um, we only get like a dark side pack and so all the cards will be relevant to what faction you're playing So if you're playing light side, you'll get rebel cards. If you're playing dark side, you'll get dark side cards We've Got stormtroopers in there got tie fighters tie fighters deal a ton of damage uh, From the air they can't be shot down and it is a one-time use and it has a long strip So anything in that strip on the battlefield will be killed We've got an Imperial Sentry Droid. It's a rare card, and these are really, really strong. So this is a very tanky unit. So if you think about the Knight in Clash Royale, this is how this kind of works. But instead of having a sword, it's got a gun, because guns are bad in this game. And there we go. That's what we've got for our starting hand. So that there is a turret. That's Slave 1 going in there nicely. And some Rebel Troopers here as well, who are obviously our enemy. So in Star Wars Force Arena... What you have to do is you have three turrets that you have to defend on the battlefield with the fourth one being your shield generator which is at the very very back. So if you think to the Empire Strikes Back where the rebels had to defend the shield generator and that is kind of the idea here. So a leader has not arrived on the battlefield yet, defend your turret from incoming attacks. So rather than using our leader to defend we can drop cards on the battlefield. So in one versus one when we talk about strategies and things, you may not be close enough to a turret to defend it, but you don't have to worry about that. You can just drop down some cards using your energy. 
so use energy to deploy your units it says there so right now the bottom right hand side you'll see that big 10 and a flashing yellow line this is your energy now your energy will replenish over time at the start of any game you'll always start off with seven and it builds up quickly to 10. you do not want to go over 10 if you can help it because you're just going to waste energy and each card has an energy cost so that stormtrooper there costs two energy so if I deploy it on a battlefield, that then gives me 8, and then it will replenish itself back up to 9 to 10. And there you've got the Sentry Droid cost 3, and a TIE Fighter cost 3. So when you make up decks and things to do battle, you want to bear that in mind, how much energy your deck will cost, because if it's a high cost in energy deck, it'll take longer for you to deploy things down. So, let's drag and drop, that's all we need to do, drag and drop onto the battlefield. Let's use 2 energy. So you see it come, it'll come off here on the right side now. So eight, and it builds back up to nine, to 10. Nice and easy. And it's back up to 10 again now. So I can't deploy anything that right now because it won't let me. But wiring bomber coming into attack. So that'll kill that. So that's, an, that's like a TIE fighter attack. It comes in from the air and kills your unit. So we're gonna re respond with that with our own airstrike with a TIE fighter. And he costs three energy. Then what we do, we drag it. And you can see there, that line on the battlefield. So if I move this around, you'll see the grid. And basically anything in the, inside that grid will be killed or it will have damage done to it. But because these cars are really low level, they should die. Let's have a look. There we go. Boom, and they're dead. And that's it. That's how you take out a lot of troopers. So it's now our turn to attack the enemy turret. Let's do that now. There he is. So on the game, in 1 versus 1 and also 2v2, there's a red line that you see here, and you cannot deploy troopers in that area. However, if you are using an air unit, like a drop pod or the TIE fighters or anything like that, you can still attack those turret from the air. You just can't do it on the ground. You have to be within this line in your own side of the map. That's how it kind of works. So we've got Boba Fett now, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll get our attack going so one thing you want to be doing in the game really is have your units in front of you taking damage from the turret and once the turret knocks onto your troopers you as a leader can go in there and start dealing some damage to the turret too without being attacked so double tap will deploy it right in front of me rather than having to drag and drop there you go like that do some more that's good so they've now turrets now locked onto the stormtrooper so we can go into attack and help. So we'll double click, use my special ability on the, on the turret, and again, we'll use it again. Another card goes in there, one more, and it's destroyed. And we didn't take any damage as a leader. If your units die, it doesn't matter because they are expendable and they'll obviously be replenishment once you get the cards back again. But if your leader takes damage in the game, what will happen is he will die and he have to respawn. And there is a punishment if you take too many deaths in the match. So your respawn time will last one second longer, up to a maximum of 10 seconds. And obviously in that 10 seconds, your enemy will attack you and you are vulnerable because you can't deploy any cards, you're not active in the game. But again, we'll talk more about that later on as we get into some games. So we've got a pack to open. This is a rebel pack, got a grenader. So if you're using Sabrine, this is a card that gets a bonus because it explodes has been a grenader, which is really good cost three energy and there you've got rebel troopers and the royal guards which are like the um heavies they're really strong too so this is like a basic map setup here so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this in the next video what the basics of the game map is all about so thanks so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it any questions please feel free to comment below and i'll do my best to answer them for you uh, and if you haven't subscribed and you like this content, please hit that subscribe button somewhere on the right, top right, I think. And I'll see you in the next Let's Play Star Wars Force Arena video. May the Force be with you.